To produce one ton of paper, about 17 trees are needed. Usually, it's spruce, pine, or birch. The wood is converted into chips and boiled for 12 hours with sodium hydrosulfide and sulfur dioxide. As a result of chemical reactions, pure cellulose is produced. It's compressed into sheets and sent to the paper factory. Cellulose comes to the factory in these batches, or to call them more correctly, piles. Basically, it is already quite similar to paper in appearance, and even to the touch. But, no, this is just raw material. Pure cellulose is brittle and thick. It is turned into the familiar, smooth, and flexible paper sheet in several stages. First, the pulp is stirred with the water in special devices, called mills. Dye is added if you need colored paper. It then sits in these pools to soak up the moisture. The process is called dissolution. As an example, we will try to make a sheet of paper using the same technology they use at the factory. And that's how it looks in miniature form. This is a blender, inside of it pulp. Let's put in some more, now some water. And then just blend. There. The result is a uniform mass that is referred to as papery. The paper mass resembles porridge. To bind fibers together, factories use adhesive with a base of resin and rosin. It even has a special substance, resonates, which makes the paper strong and water repellent. And to make it white and opaque, the pulp is filled with chalk. Again, just to show you, we take chalk, dye, adhesive, and now we blend it again. Paper pulp is supplied to the so-called paper-making machine. This is a long conveyor. In the first section is a movable table with hydro strips. They, like blades, cut away water from the pulpy substance. Then the pulp falls into the wet box, which is blown by fans. And then enters the conveyor, where it is dehydrated by a vacuum-making pump. At this stage, the cellulose fibers are woven to form a whole paper sheet. At this stage, you can even touch it without fear of damaging it. The following process is similar to what happens with laundry after washing. While still wet, papers pass through a series of cylinders. Some extract it. Others heat it from inside with hot steam, dry it. And the third, polish it. Finally, the paper sheet is compacted and sanded by a movable press.
It's a bit like doing your ironing. Smooth paper is then wound onto rolls. This is the ready product, which needs only to be packed. And shipped to the buyer. So what about our homemade paper sheet? Pour into a grid, keep pouring. You can smooth it out a little and, well, that was what we wanted to prove, lumps and grooves. After the water completely dries off and the mass hardens, this will be a sheet of paper, but the quality of it will be so-so. As expected, handmade sheets of paper without further processing turns out rough and porous. But nevertheless, this is real paper. It is believed that the Chinese dignitary Sai Lun invented paper in 105 AD. Here is what he used. Crushed fiber, mulberry mixed with water, add ash, hemp, and mix thoroughly. The obtained mass then dries on wooden sieves. Finished paper sheets are polished by smooth stones. It is interesting that since the introduction of the paper, only the facilities for its production have changed. But the overall process remains the same. This company makes a variety of cardboard packaging. There is no clear border between cardboard and paper, but there is a clear view of the majority that cardboard is a rough material. Well, what can that be good for? Only for packaging boxes? And yet, we were very surprised when we saw a room where literally everything was made out of cardboard. Everything. We all know who usually lives in a cardboard box. This is not a very serious look. Yes, it's hard to imagine a more impractical material for furniture production. I have a question. Why is cardboard furniture needed and what are the specifics of its use? For example, if you decide to move and you have no money for a normal wardrobe or there is no money for the wardrobe that you want, you can order a product like this. It is simple. You just put it together yourself, place it where you need it and store your things there temporarily. Then it can be easily recycled. The process of creating cardboard furniture is no different than for usual pieces. It's modeled by designers, and the finished project is sent to the factory. In fact, it takes about an hour to cut separate parts from a single sheet of cardboard. It takes about the same amount of time to put it together. The elements are interconnected like a children's construction kit. The main advantage of cardboard is that you can make literally anything out of it. And in record time. And very cheaply. For example, a racing car. Or here's a chair as a throne from a popular series. But still, how firm is cardboard furniture? After all, like it or not, it's just paper. I have to say, when I sat on this chair, I thought that it will bend, break, or tear under my weight. Can something like this happen or not? 
Everybody has the fear when they are first faced with cardboard furniture. This is probably just how we think. We're not used to it. It is something new and different. On the other hand, the reliability of this product, its characteristics, it is comparable to, well, inexpensive furniture. We checked. The cardboard stool held, even when stood on. Although the disadvantages of such furniture are quite obvious. Paper is understandably vulnerable to water. However, this problem is solved by lamination. Introduced at the beginning of our era, paper has many times confirmed its practicality and irreplaceability. And even today, as it gradually loses its position, it will never disappear. And this is for sure. Even the latest electronic gadgets are bought in boxes. And if you just look around right now, you will surely find paper.